surpass the past. Amen? Amen? Amen. It's possible. Okay, I'm going to go to Jeremiah 21, 29, verse 11. I decided to minister on this word because I realize in life you cannot move forward without cutting the ties to our past. Amen? Amen. And to be able to do that, you need to know that we have a good God. I say we have a good God. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Amen? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. And I think it's important as Christians. You know, everybody knows this Bible verse, but when challenges of life come our way, this verse doesn't seem real. Amen? But today I'm here to tell you that God, he knows the thoughts that he has towards you and me. And all at the end of the day, he wants to give us peace, a future, and a hope. Amen? Another Bible verse says, an expected end. He has an expected end to your life. Say amen. amen. You might not know how your end will be, but God says he has an expected end. I say God has an expected end to your life. I want your life to be a life full of peace, knowing that the God that you serve, he is in charge of your life, and regardless of the tours in your life, he has an expected end. Say an expected end to you. Next verse. Hallelujah. He says, I make known the end from, I make known the end from, from ancient times what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that, I will do all, okay, he, he, he's not going to do what you please. Amen? He's going to do what? Hallelujah. He says he makes known the end from the beginning. From ancient times to what is still to come. God knows my end. Can you find rest in that? God, you know my end. You know the expected ends to my life. But to understand that, you need to know that God is a sovereign God. Say, God is a sovereign God. He is all-knowing. Say, he's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. And, and one more thing, he's absolutely free to do whatever he pleases. If he was not absolutely free to do whatever he is, he wouldn't be God. So he says, I know what I have for you, and there is an expected end to your life. In between, looks like you are in charge or the devil is after you, but you know, no, no, no. He said, no, no, no. My purpose will stand, and I will do whatever I please. How many here have given their life to Jesus? How many here have said, God, you are God in my life? You are free to do whatever you choose. Amen? Amen. He has all knowledge, all wisdom regarding your life. He has an eternal purpose and dream for each one of us. He makes known the end from the beginning. Which means whatever the ship is going to go of your life, it will always go back to the expected end of God for you. Whatever, where the wind will try to shake your boat, 
it's always going to go at the destination of God for your life. Do you understand that? Because sometimes we look at the winds. We look at the tornadoes that comes against us. And we think like, God, I'm dying in this sea of life. I'm being shipwrecked. But God said, I'm all-knowing, all-powerful, and I have an expected end. So regardless where the ship brings you, I have the final command on this ship. And it's going to always land where I want it to land. I think you can give a praise offering to the Lord for that. Amen? He's God all by himself. Say, he is God all by himself. Amen? The counsel of the Lord stands forever. Next verse. And the plans of his heart is from generation to So he's not only the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He's still the God of Judith, the God of Pastor Coffee. From generation to generation, his purpose upon your life will stand. Say, it will stand. Tell your neighbor, my purpose will stand because it's God's purpose for my life. So the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart from generation to generation. Today I want to talk to somebody who feels lost in this sea of life. I want to talk to somebody who looks at their situation and they don't see no hope. They don't don't see a future. I want to talk to somebody whose dream seems like has been shattered. I want to talk to somebody who feels like I'm getting old, that everything God, you promise, I don't see it come to pass. I'm talking to you today. Your ship will get at his destination because the counsel of the Lord will stand forever. Even in my mistake, your purpose will stand. Even in my shortcomings, his purpose will stand for you. Even when you fail him, his purpose will still stand for you. Do you understand today what I'm saying? I'm talking about a God who's sovereign, who loves his people, and who has a good plans for them. Amen? Did you hear? Did you hear that? Because for us to be able to move past our past, we need to understand the kind of God that we serve. We need to know that he has eternal plans for each one of us, regardless of how life looks like for you today. Regardless how life looks like for you yesterday. We need to understand that there's an expected end to your life. That your life is a life full of hope and future. You have to understand that as long as you stand in God, you keep saying, God, I come to you every day. Your ship will sail at the right place. I say your ship will sail at the right place. Proverbs 19.21, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Are you guys getting all these verses? Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will, that will. So what does that mean? Your decisions of the past, whether good or bad, have passed through the lenses of God's purpose for your life. I'm going to say it again. Your decisions of the past have passed through the lenses of God's purpose. Whether good or bad, whether horrible, they still pass through the purpose of God, through the lenses. Meaning what? If this will stop the purpose of God on your life, they wouldn't have gone through. They wouldn't have happened. I was talking to somebody the other day, and we're chatting about this sermon. And she's like, you know, sometimes I wonder if I made the right decision to come to Canada. Because I see how it took me forever to get my papers. Where I feel like I've wasted my time. Does it happen to some of us sometimes? 
You feel like you made wrong decisions and wrong choices. Anybody at home? And me, I say according to, to this word, if God allowed this to happen, it had a purpose behind it. Amen? You may seem like you made that plan. Yes, you did. But God, at the end of the day, make a decision whether a plan will go through or not. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Can I talk to some immigrants here? Some of us have come here. We had good jobs. Powerful back home. And we come here in the dream or hope of having a better life. Amen? And then you come here, things don't look as rosy as they were in your head. Canada is not anymore the land of milk and honey. <laughs> and you are struggling with the fact, why did I make that decision to come? Hello? I'm talking to some of you. You sleep at night, you look at your husband or your wife, you're like, God, this is the biggest mistake of my life. And he or she is snoring, just drive me crazy. <laughs> Am I, to, I know you won't tell me. Some of you, some of you are, I'm stuck forever. I cannot divorce. Manage. Manage. <laughs> but what I'm saying is serious. Because the past decision has a way to torment us. Mm -hmm. That's why today we got to move past those mistakes or decisions. You're asking yourself that question. Why did I come to this city? Why did I come to this church? Wow. This was God, 100%. <laughs> but I'm serious. The things the enemy used to torment our mind because of the decisions of our past. But God says today, the purpose, my purpose will still stand. What looks like it's a mistake is a bad decision. It's working together for your good. Hallelujah. Whatever it is in your life that you think is negative or is a shortcoming, that very thing God will use to establish his purpose in your life. I said God will use it to establish his purpose in your life. I don't care how many times you've been divorced. I don't care how many times you've seen have come short of the glory of God. God said, I will establish my purpose in your life through that very situation. Are you hearing me today? Why do we put the power of God into the eyes of a man? Man has no power, but God is all powerful. God is all powerful. Nothing is too difficult for him. I want your spirit to settle on that fact. The devil is a liar. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Make you believe that there's no hope for you. And I'm here to stand here to tell you there's a hope for you. There's an expected end for you. There is peace. There's a good future for you. Do you understand this morning? Do you understand this morning? The devil is a liar. He is a liar. There's no truth in him. Don't let those thoughts hold you back. Some of us, we are mastered by the failure of our past. They master us. They have a hold on us. Some of us, we have we've been mastered by the victory of our past. 
When I was back home, I was powerful, but look at me now. There is an expected end to your life. Are you hearing me today? He's in charge of your life. When you say, Jesus, come be the Lord of my life. Everything you go through, God turns it for good. It doesn't matter the season of your life that you're going through today. It's just a season. When you understand that this God who established his will and his purpose, he said it will stand from generation to generation. It doesn't matter who you are. Don't let today and yesterday's season have a hold on you and make you feel like there's no hope for your tomorrow. There is a hope in Christ. I said there is a hope in Christ. Amen. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. Forget the former things, says the Lord. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God say, forget the former things. Do not put, do not dwell on the past. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. He says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. We cannot enter into the new thing, the next thing for God, for us, without closing the door to our past. I say, without closing the door to our past. Even God had created this body to walk forward. If your head is looking there, you are a monster. Always going forward with God. He did our feet so that we walk forward. I say forward. Not former, new, forward. He created our eyes to look forward, not backwards. How many times we are always like that? But we're just trying to hold on to the past to move forward. You're going to be ripped in two. You've got to cut the ties to the past so you can move forward properly into the new that God has for you. Am I talking to somebody this morning? I'm talking to a church that is ready to go forward. I'm talking to a church that's too seized who perceive what God is doing. I tell you, when you are lost in the emotion of your past, you can never perceive what God is doing in your life. Your vision becomes very blurred. So he said, do you not see it? Every day, at the end of the evening, prophetic you guys say, I'm closing that door. The day is over. I'm entering into the new. Yeah. Amen. His mercies are renewed every morning. I'm closing to yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Today, I mean the now. God, help me to perceive, to see the new thing you're doing in my life. Are you hearing today? This is so profound. I think I'm preaching myself happy, amen? Amen. Do not allow your past experiences, those former things, both good and bad, to color the perception of the present and the expectation of the future. It doesn't matter how bad the situation of yesterday was. It doesn't define your today and your future. God is the one who defines it. I say, God is the one who defines it. Say, God, define my life. Define my purpose. 
Make it clear for my life. If we grow consumed with the former things, we won't be able to fully take advantage of the present. This is deep. Hallelujah. So he said, forget the former things. How can I forget God? The past is, past, or is part of who I am. But God says, do not dwell on the past. To dwell on something is to keep thinking about the past until it becomes a problem. Hallelujah. Some wives should stop dwelling on the past in their marriage. I'm telling you. Do you hear today? We can't be consumed with yesterday. Yesterday mistakes. Yesterday disappointment. Yesterday suffering. Because that was defined in your yesterday. But today is a new day for you. He says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Can't you see it? Do you not perceive it? Even in your desert, I will make a way. Even in your wilderness, I will make a way. Tell your neighbor, say, God, make a way for me. Make a way for me. Make a way for me. Today, I want to put an end to the season of mourning. When we mourn our past, every time we are dwelling on our past, we are mourning our past, a season that has passed. And when every time we go in a place where we are down and discouraged, that's when we look at our last victory, our former victory, and it becomes something you meditate on. When I was back home, I used to be this and that. Things used to be this and that. And then you are tormenting yourself. Today we need to put an end to that sin when you mourn your past. It doesn't matter how good it is. Every time you're down, you start remembering back home. <laughs> we all do. Even the Lord said to someone, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? There has to be an end to your mourning. There has to be an end to whatever has gone through in your life. Because you see, if you keep with it, you will not be able to move forward. Amen? So God is saying to somebody today, put an end to your mourning. Today, the mourning must end. Sometimes we need to put an end to expectations we had on our lives. I thought by this time I'll be this. Today let's put an end to that. Hallelujah. Philippians 3.13, the Bible says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Even the Apostle Paul said forgetting. He said one thing I do, I must forget what's in the back. I must forget the decisions that I made. I must stop tormenting myself with the things of the past that I have no more control over. Forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forward to those things that are ahead. Amen? Today we're going to reach forward and not backward. I said today we're going to reach forward and not backward. Today we're going to reach forward and not backward. 
If you don't let the past die, it won't let you live. If you don't let your past die, it won't let you live. Amen? Today we want to step out of our history and step into our destiny. And our destiny is now. Hallelujah. Step out of your history and step into your destiny. And we're going to ask God for the grace to do it. Because there's things that have happened in our lives to us that we're having a hard time letting go. But God's grace is available this morning. Amen? Ecclesiastes 7.10. Do not say, why is it that the former days were better than these? Oh. For it is not from wisdom that you ask about this. Do not say, why is it that the former days were better than this? Why are you questioning the goodness of God of today? Because it is not from wisdom that you ask about this. Today we must close the door. Amen? Hallelujah. Romans 8, 28. Reading out of the Passion Translation. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. Are you taking this Bible verse in? So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan. Today we're going to ask God to open our eyes, to tell us again what he has called us for. Because while you are in the wilderness and you are in the desert, you can only connect to what you know. And that's why we always go to the past. But today we want to connect to the purpose of God upon our lives today. So we are able to let go of the past. So God can show us, you might be going through a hard time, but see what I have for you. So you can reach out for those things that he has called you for. Amen? We're going to ask God, God, speak to us about my tomorrow. So that I can hold on to that. So that I stop looking backward. Amen? To the things of the past. God, show me how much you love me so I do not live in fear and frustration and stress. Are you convinced together? Today, are you convinced that everything, that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives? For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his design purpose. Today we're going to say, God, open my eyes. Let me perceive in this season of wilderness. Let me perceive what you have for me because I know every morning you're doing a new thing for me. Hallelujah. That's the only solution. Because as humans, we've got to hang on to something. I've got to hang on to something. Hallelujah. And God will speak to us. I have a good plans for you, not for evil. To give you a future, to give you peace, and to give you an expected end. Do not look at you today, but know that the God of today is the God of your tomorrow who will change and shift your whole life apart, around. Hallelujah. Do not remember the former things. Do not dwell onto your past. Because I'm doing a new things in your life. I'm going to make a way. I'm going to make a way for you. 
have the power and the ability to do it for your life. Are we ready to let the former things pass? Huh? I'm ready. Are you ready? Philippians 1.6, the Bible says, For, and I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. He who began a good work for you. God is woven together every detail of your life. I want you to rise up in the presence of God today. Number one, we're going to put an end to the season of mourning. The seasons of our lives, whether good or bad, we need to end them. Hallelujah. I say we need to end those seasons because they belong to the past. Your season of failure, your season of pain and suffering, we're going to put an end. God said, how long are you going to keep mourning? Dwelling on your past. How long? Let me show you the new thing that I want to do for you. God wants to show you the new things. When I moved back here in, Mon in Calgary, out of Montreal, and I pour, I put my life, my hope, everything in this church in Montreal. And when God said it was time to come back, I did it because I, I knew it was the will of God. But you see, I started mourning this season because it was a beautiful season for me. It was a season where I find full expression as a person. A season where I could see who God has made in me. So Montreal had a, a very beautiful, how do I say, effect on me. It was hard, but it was life-changing. And when it was time to come, I came. But you see, the memories and the emotion, the love, everything of the past stayed within me. And because it was an end of a season, it was a death of a season. It took me a long time to be able to separate myself from that, to be able to move forward in what God wanted me to do here. So you see, it's not only bad things. Even the good things in your life, when God brings you to a place of end of it, you still mourn that season. And last Sunday, I spoke to God as I was driving here. I said, God, I embrace the new season of my life. And sometimes we have difficulty embracing the new season. Even if it's a challenging season, we need to get to a place where we must embrace it. Hallelujah. We must embrace it. God says he holds our times in his hand. So for some of us who have had great victories in our lives and we found in a place of a desert, of wilderness, and we wonder, how did I get here? And you keep reliving your past. God said, this is an end of a season. I want to do a new thing for you. I want to do a new thing for you. And as I was driving to church, I said, God, I embrace this new season. No matter how it looks like, prophetically, I put an end to the past. And today, I want we do that. Some of you is victory. Some of you is pain and suffering. Some of you is decision you have made. And you are questioning if it was the will of God, the right decision or not. Today, 
God says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Do not put to remembrance the former things. Are we ready to close the door to the former things? We're going to ask the grace of God to do it. But it, because it's not by might, it's not by power, it is by the Holy Spirit. And then I said, God, prophetically, I put an end. I was driving. I put an end to this new season. And I was listening to Hillsong, New Wine. The Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old white skin. Today, we're going to put an end to the old white skin that is you. God wants to put a new wine in each one of you. He said he can put the new thing in your old white skin. If not, it's going to burst because it cannot contain what God wants to do in your life. Hallelujah. There is a new freedom. There is a new wine that God wants to pour in the life of his people. But he said a new wine skin is needed. A new wine skin is needed. A new wine skin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, God, I'm a new white skin today. Put a new wine in me. A new freedom. A new power. A new desire. A new perception. I want to see the new thing in my life. So today, we're going to make a prophetic declaration. We're going to say, I put an end to this new old season. I will not compare my past season to my new season. Because I cannot compare the old wine skin to the new wine skin. Because God is ready. He's about to pour a new freedom, a new desire, a new plan, a new job for your life. Oh! Do not remember the former things. And put to mind, do not dwell on the past. For behold, I'm doing the new things. Do you not see it? Do you not perceive it? Oh, I'm about to make a way in the wilderness to give water to my people. And your freedom is about to come in your life. And your perception is about to come in your life. Break free from your old. Break free from your past. Jesus, Jesus, you cannot receive the new if you're still holding on to the old. Today we let go of the old. We let go of the old. We let go of the old. Our old plans, our old victories, our old pains, our old decisions, our old suffering. We put an end, we put an end, put an end. Jesus. God is saying to somebody, I'm making a way for you. I'm making a way for you. I'm making a way for you. And your wine, and your freedom, and your desire, and your joy, and your perception, I'm making a way. I'm making a way for my people. Oh, I'm making a way. He said, behold, I'm making everything new again in your life. Everything new again. Everything new again. Everything new again. Lift up your hands today. For God says, do not say the old days were better because what I'm about to do is greater and better and stronger for your life. Haraba Seneke, Ayababa Seneke Reba. I feel God is saying as long as you have breath in this body 
There is greater things that I have in store for you. He says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Oh, it has not entered into your mind. The things that I have prepared for those who love me. Oh, do we have lovers in this house? Do we have lovers in this house? No man has seen, no ear has heard. Oh, yababa sendeke rebasataka, rebaba sendeke. So you see, as long as I was mourning Montreal, I couldn't see what God has for me in Calgary. I couldn't perceive what God has for me. I could do only by faith. But the minute I said, God, I put an end to this season of Montreal. I put an end to this season of mourning. God said, opening my eyes. He said, now see. Do you not perceive it? And I said, God, now I perceive it. I perceive it. Let go and reach out. Let go and reach out. Let go and reach out to the new. Do you not perceive it this morning? Do you not perceive it this morning? Do you not perceive it this morning? Let go, let go, let go. Let go, let go. I let go. Say, I'm reaching, I'm reaching, I'm reaching. I'm reaching to the things that you have for me, God. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Today I want we do a prophetic prayer. Are we ready? Say, Lord Jesus, I cut the cord to my, time, my past. I release my past. I put an end to the season of mourning. Today, prophetically, I enter in my today. I enter in my new thing, God. God, I remove myself from the old white skin. God, this is a new white skin. Pour out a new wine, God. Pour out a new freedom, God. Pour out a new strength, God. Show me what you got for me, God, so that I can reach out, so I can reach it, God, with all my heart, with all my strength, and with all my power. In the mighty name of Jesus, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out. Reach out, reach out, reach out. Haraba sende kereba. Oh, so when I finish prophetically declaring, I arrive at church during worship. I said, God, now I'm gonna command my body, my emotion to line up with the will of God for my life. Because sometimes the emotion don't wanna move forward, they wanna still hold you back. And I said, God, I said, emotion, you must line up with the will of God for your life. Emotion, you must surrender to the master plan of your life. And I found a new freedom. Today, we're going to put an end to our emotions. Are you ready? God said, command your emotion to line up with the will of God. Command your feeling to line up with the will of God. Today we're going to command it. Are you ready today? Are you ready to command everything that does not want to line up with what God has for me? We're going to command it with our mouth, with our voice. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Hallelujah. I want you to repeat after me. Today, I command my emotion to align up with the will of God. I command my feelings to submit to the plan of God. I command every desire to be subject to the will and the plan of God upon my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Command, command. They must line up, they must line up. 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 Jesus. We're going to ask God for the grace to move forward. The grace to move forward. Hallelujah. Father God, come on, repeat after me. Father God, give me the grace to keep my eyes focused 
on the goal that is ahead of me. Give me grace to perceive the things that you have for me. Give me grace not to turn back. Give me grace to overcome the desires of the past because today is a new day. Today is a new grace. Father God, give me wisdom to know what to look for, to know what to do for my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, can we clap our hands to the Lord today? Yay! 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 So you know what happened after I finished preaching myself happy? I went to the church of the Arabic and I said, God, what would you have me do now as I'm a new person? Hallelujah. And you know what? God started speaking to me. So today, I want you to ask your master, God, what would you, would you want me to do for today? That's between you and your Jesus. Say, God, reveal your purpose. Renew your purpose upon my life. Let me hear it. Let me know it, God. What would you want us to do as a church, as a person, as a family, God? In this season of wilderness, what would you want us to do? Because you're about to make, a way, to make a way where there seems to be no way. Today, I made a covenant with my eyes that I will only look forward. That I will only look forward. That I will only look forward. Today, I choose not to be mastered by anything but God and His love. Today, I choose to be a slave of love, not a slave to fear. A slave of love to my God. A slave of love to my God. Not a slave to uncertainty and fear and struggles. A slave of love. Father God, open our eyes today. We want to perceive everything that you have for us this morning. Oh God, open the eyes of our understanding today. Open the eyes of somebody today to see what you have prepared for them, God. God, I pray for a gushing river, a tsunami river in our wilderness, in our desert today, God. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up here. Close the door. The door is closed. Never to be opened again. God, I thank you for a clear vision. A clear understanding for your people. guys know that song? Wine by Hillsong? Oh. Hallelujah. We're going to give this song unto the Lord and say, God, thank you for making me a new person.